to Heart of Zion with Pastor Natalie. Okay, let's dive in. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. I am live in the studio and I've got a special surprise today. The Holy Spirit is a special surprise. I've got my nephew in the studio with me, D'Angelo Collins, and D'Angelo has an absolutely uh, exceptional testimony about the things that God has done for him. So we're going to do uh, uh, the uh, show a, a bit different today, but not any different than what the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, <laughs> navigating this show for us. Yeah, I had to make sure the camera was on. So I just, I'm, I'm real excited about today's show because uh, it's always exciting when the Lord tells you to bring someone in uh, that he's going to expand, he's going to expound on some things. And so uh, just believe me, you've got a, a really good uh, show in store for you, okay? Not because of us, but because of the glory that we're going to bring to God today. So um, D'Angelo, tell us a little about yourself. Um, tell us how, uh, tell the audience how we met and, um, you know, just let God, uh, let's give God the glory, okay? Yeah, well, um, I would say because due to playing sports, um, you know, uh, your sons was end up being my best friends and me moving around, um, being an athlete, you know, trying to find somewhere to live. You opens your doors up for me and um, that's kind of like was the beginning of everything, you know, of of just a transition to, to be able to have a somewhere where you rest your head at and, you know, um, go to school every day. Cause you know, me, Jason and Ryan went to the same high school. So it was, it was easy. The transition was easy, better than um, other situations. You know, being a, um, one of the top players in the country, um, right. coming prior of high school to the NBA, it was kind of like, the transition was easy, you know? Yeah. Tell us, tell the audience also, give them a little background on yourself, where you, you know, where you were born, where you grew up. Okay, so I was born in Stockton, California. It's a city right outside next to Sacramento. Um, population not too big. Um, Stockton is a, um, a small city, but a dangerous city. Um, I believe if I, if I would have stayed in Stockton, I probably would have ended up dead or in prison for sure. But God, you know, you know how to make God laugh, tell me your plans. So God had a different plan for me. And um, when I made the transition from Stockton to Los Angeles, it was more so related to basketball. You know, it was more so me chasing my dream. And um, that was pretty much it, just chasing a dream, a kid chasing a dream. And that's usually how it is. I think, D'Angelo, even for us adults, you know, from childhood somewhere, it's all, all of us, we're chasing some kind of dream, whether it's something that we didn't get when we were younger, growing up, the things that, you know, were not there in the home. Uh, many, so, you know, so many families we can relate to either either uh, growing up in a single parent at home and, um, you know, trying to tra trace, whether we're chasing dreams to get out of the urban life or the entrapments of the urban life. Right. Uh, those those are the things that, um, especially young men like yourself, usually are, you know, especially when God gives you a gift, you know, with your size and your stature and the gift he gave you for sports. And so uh, that is the dream of many. You know, for some, it's it's rappers. You know, you've, we got young people growing up in urban cities that are also trying to chase a dream, whether it's sports or it's rapping, or it's education, you know, for some kind of the little nerdy guy you right, know right. that doesn't have anything he can't get the girls and you know guys guys like you that was getting the girls without even trying and so you know that person can bury themselves in an education and learning things but we're all trying to find a way chasing dreams and all trying to find something that's going to make us feel fulfilled in life right. tell us a little bit about your family well um so my mom, I was, she's a single um, parent. She raised three, um, I got three brothers. Um, I'm the youngest of two. Um, she was a very strong woman. So it was like seeing my mom go to work every day to provide for us. You know, she was driving trucks to come home. Wow. I, yeah, I, so my dream was to 
get her off the trucks. That's why I play sports. You know, I, I ran track. I did football. Baseball was actually my number one sport, but I had quit because it was basketball was more convenient. You were know? you too? You were. It was wasn't just that you were too big to play baseball. Nah, you know, <laughs> and it, I, being growing up in the hood, you didn't really have nobody to to like play baseball with you know it's not like somebody I was a pitcher so it wasn't like I had somebody be like hey man you want to go to the park and catch why I pitch you know <laughs> everybody had a basketball or football so it was like oh well there goes my baseball career okay so um yeah so basketball was easy because you could get 10 20 people to go play basketball but trying to get people to play baseball is like man okay. it's, it's like pulling teeth not too not, <laughs> not a big thrill for the urban life yeah, okay yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> okay definitely. so what about your brothers were any of them uh you know into sports yeah my um my second oldest brother he he played football um he was a quarterback i think if he would have kept at it i think he would have been um something but you know um people go down different paths you know so um and then my older brother uh he kind of got cut up in the in the streets in the system, so it was like um, it was different for him. Everybody got a path that, yes. that, that they go through, you know. So yes, yes, they do. There is a path, you know, and is is for most human beings, most of us. There's a path that God has for us. Many times, um, we'll we let's just say this: the vast majority of people miss the path early on. It's very few that. Uh, in, in my experience that I found God is able to grasp them at an early age because one of the things that happens is that Satan and his crew are right there too to 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 uh, derail yeah. derail the plans and the path of God D'Angelo I remember you shared a testimony with me um, when I met you many years ago gosh it's been what now almost maybe 20 it's been a long time. I can't believe it's that it's probably like 22 years yeah <laughs> So tell me, uh, uh, share with the audience, uh, there was a particular uh, incident that happened that you know God intervened in your life that happened to you in the North, in the Bay Area. Um, so it was 1996. Um, I was probably one of those kids that was um, growing up, going in the wrong direction, right? And um, I just remember my friend, um, his name is Michael D. His mom, they end up moving to Sacramento. They end up moving to Sacramento. And when they moved to Sacramento, we didn't know what Sacramento, like the streets, the area of what, you know, what it was. Like you just, you're out there. You don't really know, you know, we don't know. Like it was a war going on basically where she moved at. We didn't know. So we were, um, we were, we were end up walking looking for some girls one night and um <laughs> and it was looking for uh um michael he got a brother named dennis so we was looking for dennis and these girls so we end up going to um like around a corner from the apartment complex and it was like a 7-eleven uh, right across the street from there so the apartment complex it has all bar fences like it's like from where we were walking, it was more like a straight shot. Like, you can't, like, turn because if you turn, it's the bar fences there. And if you go left, it's the middle of the street. So on our way back, we were walking next to the bar fences. And I just remember seeing, like, um, like a tumbleweed, like, rolling the street. It was like a, like a, like an eerie wind. It was like, I remember seeing, like, I've never seen really tumbleweed. It was like, tumbleweed was rolling in the middle of the street. And it was kind of, like, strange to me. And, the, like, it was... A eerie feeling. It was like a dark, eerie feeling, and um, I just remember a, a, a white flatbed truck that pulled up mm -hmm. right next to us. You know, back in the day, these these guys used to have big bomber coats and beanies and stuff, and so um, they were. It was actually a guy sitting on top of the the passenger uh, um, window overlooking the truck right and while he was overlooking the truck they were so close i thought they was gonna get out and jump us you know you know and so as we're walking the guy was like um where you guys from and uh michael was talking to him i'm i'm sitting here thinking like man this the feeling is not good and i just remember he said it's north Highlands paru and let's smoke him slim and i was like michael on the count of three we gonna run mm. and the only thing we had was a straight shot till we got to the corner mm. because if if we go in the middle of the street, it's no, we can't hop the fence. So as on the count of three, we start running. And I just remember as I ran, I was like, God, please don't let me die. Mm -hmm. And I just remember 
guns, they pulled the guns out and just start shooting. Pop, 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 pop. As we hit the corner, I just remember from the corner of my eye, I remember seeing Michael fall. Bam. Mm. And I just, at, at that point, I start to cover my head like this so I don't get hit. I'm like, you know, he fell. I'm like, I don't want to get shot in the head. I'm thinking I'm going to get shot all in the back. It's like, it just was death was there. And I just remember as I cover my head, I'm looking up and I, I see a fire coming from the sky. It was mm. like, it, it was like, like almost like you watch some superhero movies, you see like, mm. it, but it was like a fire coming. And I, at this point, I'm not running anymore. It, it, it was like, I was like, just stuck. And I just remember hearing bullets, ping, ping, ricochet. And all of a sudden, when that fire hit me, I thought I was dead. Because I like, I transitioned to like, when you die, you go through light speed. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was going through light speed. I just remember God having my life in the air like an iPad and he was moving it. Mm. Like, like just, you know, just moving it fast. And I just, I remember like being a baby at the beach and I told my mom, I was like, mom, you was at the, had me at the beach. I was scared. I was like next to the water. She was like, how do you know that? Um, and this is after the incident I had told her this. Mm -hmm. So um, I was in the presence of God, but he made it seem only a second. Like it was like I was there. I was like in the presence of God for like it felt like like months, but He only made it a second. So um, when when I came back, like like it felt like I was back released to the earth. I just remember seeing Michael laying on the ground. The doctor said he got uh, shot three times in the head. Uh, they removed two bullets. One one was too deep, and it was gonna cause eternal bleeding, and he was gonna die. And I just remember. Um, I was in the car with my mom and she said, he's not gonna die, I had a vision of him doing something. And you like a kid, you like, yeah, mom, whatever. Like, you're just mm -hmm. trying to like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he, he got shot three times in the head. Like, what are you talking about? Like, he's gonna die. And I remember just getting a phone call and they were like, Michael woke up out of a coma. And I'm like, what, what do you mean woke up out of a coma? He woke up out of a coma waving at the angels in the mm -hmm. hospital. <laughs> and I was like, what? They was like, yeah, the bullet is gone. God sewed up his head and took the bullet out. And I was just like, what? I couldn't believe it. So like a week later, Michael came home and he told us um, the, the story that he had with God. And I was feeling like, I'm glad that he lived and said that because I would have went crazy because I didn't have no confirmation of what I went through. And he was the confirmation that, that like, yes, you was in the presence yes. of God. Because, visitation. Yes. And so he said, when God, God said to him, he said, Michael, I'm going to touch your head. And he said, when he touched his head, that's when he woke up in the hospital. Oh, and the bullet was gone. The, his wounds had healed. The, oh, the doctor that actually operated on him retired and become a pastor because he's never seen nothing like that. That is amazing. You yeah. see there? Yeah. Um, yeah. D'Angelo has a lot of miracles he could share with you. And we're going to try to get as much as we can in in about this next 12 minutes. His life has been a just a succession of miracles. And God has preserved his life. And even as you see him today, right now, he's recovering, still in recovery from an accident, an auto accident, a couple of weeks ago. I believe it was on the news. It was, um, was it on the news? I, you know, online? I'm not sure because I, I, I was in the hospital. So I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I know they had stories online because I saw it. Okay. And um, um, just just an amazing. I told him, you know, God told me to tell him. I told him a couple of weeks ago. I said, you're the you're like a bionic man, <laughs> and God has, uh, you know, you y'all remember the bionic man? Uh, we'll make him better, stronger, faster. We could build him up, and so God has kept him. And so also, you can't see it in the studio and not even on camera. But if he stands up, you're probably just going to be looking at his t-shirt, <laughs> the bottom of the t-shirt. D'Angelo, tell him you're. Stats, D'Angelo. We're gonna ask some questions about the. Interview. So, um, yeah, I'm 16. Weigh, weigh about 270. Um, okay, big guy. Um, so, yeah, the accident was crazy because um, I like. <laughs> Before you share that mm -hmm. real quick, we're going to do that last. Tell them about your NBA. D'Angelo was a... Um, yeah, I was like the way. number one player in the country. I was like... Back when? Uh, back in 2002. Mm -hmm. I was McDonald's All-American. Um, any... Um, stat that you could have in high school, I had. Um, I, I definitely felt that I was um, ready and, and eligible for the NBA. But um, like you know, like like I said before, you know how to make God laugh. Turn in your plans. Yes. So um, 
that was my dream to go to the NBA, but you know, it never happened um, due to politics and and a lot of stuff that happened when I was a kid. Um, so it, it kind of my dream got altered, you know. Yeah. So that's kind of like what happened. And I, you know, I played with the best of them: LeBron, Kobe, Kevin Garnett. Um, and, and me personally, I, I was feeling like I was the best to ever come out of California. <laughs> I was like, I mean, everybody I played against, it wasn't even, it wasn't even close. It was just like, you know, it was just one of those, like, because I, you know, I worked hard. I stayed yes, in the gym. Did. I stayed in the gym. Yes, I lived in the gym. And kids out there, if you ever want to do sports or be something, you know, you got to, they say, if you do something a thousand times, you're a master. So just um, work hard. That's, you know, that's what I did. I worked hard. You know, it's amazing because sometimes people have the perception that, you know, because God has a plan and a dream and he has gifts he puts in us and he has a, a path set out that we don't have to do too much. Right. But that's not God's standard. You have to work at it. So the gift yeah. that he gives you, you build upon that. Yeah. And so, you know, just because he says, I'm going to give this, this my, I'm going to give this little particular offspring that I send to the earth, you know, he's going to be this tall. Right. He's going to be statually. He's going to be strong. I'm going to give him this intellect. I'm going to give him a gift to, you know, have a sharp eye for the ball or whatever sports or whatever uh, um, uh, career he's going into. But then we have a part to play. Right. We have to perfect that thing. God likes to watch us to go from, you know, where the gift is there to that gift being uh, developed, right? Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. For so sure. you put a lot of work in for Definitely that. Definitely a lot of work. Yeah. Definitely a lot of work. Yeah, and there was a lot of attention you were getting to back then. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like, it's almost like, um, you got kids all around the world that want to do something, but God is looking at you like, okay, you pray for it, yes, right? Okay, maybe five people pray to be best, right? But then one person works out once a day. Mm -hmm. The other person works out twice a day. Me, I was working out three times a day. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it's almost like the, the work you put in is, is you're showing God that you want it more. And I think that when you put that work in, I think he helps you get you know, closer to that, to your dream, you know. Amen. Amen. So uh, there's so much. We're trying to condense this because we got about seven minutes left. And there's so much that D'Angelo could tell. So what's going to happen? The The Lord told me we're going to do a series. So today it's on radio. But after this, please join us and look for videos. They're going to be uploaded to YouTube. I'm going to be asking D'Angelo more questions because he has a truckload of testimonies that he could share uh things that god got him out of things that he got himself into because we get ourselves into things don't we oh definitely situations situations <laughs> some, some of those things are still in our heart but the father because of his love for us and his plans because when he sends us to this earth and that's what um that's the message i want to uh uh share today with the audience um god sends us here with a purpose gifts and it all has to do with a you know for us to live our best life but also to plant seed into others for right. instance D'Angelo it wouldn't be as it wouldn't be as as uh, important as if he was just chasing dreams for himself right. but you got to give back you know so for the, the other young the other young kids that are coming up they're chasing dreams too and they have dreams too and so God will you know put you in such a position where you're going to also be able to motivate, encourage, teach others, right? Right. And you said you had that in your heart as yeah, well. Most definitely. Because um, I got two sons, and both of them, um, my oldest son, he says, Dad, I'm going to be better than you. And I always tell him, be the first you. <laughs> <laughs> you know be what I mean? First be the first you. That's you know? good advice. So, um, I mean, it's good to, I tell him, I said, uh, you know, want to be better than me is like, Many have tried, many have failed, son. But he's like, I got your DNA, and I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? You you got you the closest, you're right? You you're right. You you the closest. You since you got my DNA, since you said that, it makes sense. But I, you know, I try to instill hard work into him because you know it's, it's hard work and then it's mental. You know, um, you got to be mentally there. You got yes. you got to be. You got to lock yourself in mentally. Mm -hmm. That's right. So. Um, yeah, that's you know. right. It's a mental, mental and spiritual. Spiritual is first, and mental. Actually, those two are intertwined because the dreams that we have, the intentions that we have with the heart, all those things come out of our soul. And so, um, you can feed your soul 
good things and you can feed your soul dark things, yeah, things that should not be there. And that's for everybody. That's for everybody. So with these few minutes, we've got a few more minutes left. I want D'Angelo to share. D'Angelo had, remember I said, there are so many testimonies that he could share with you today. So we're just trying to get, we're trying to bold point some things because we want you to come back and hear some more of his story because right. it's a, it's a, it's an amazing story about his life and the situations he went to, friends that he's had and lost, friends that were very dear to him, that he watched, you know, leave this earth almost before the, well, seemingly before the time. But, you know, God knows all. So uh, I'm going to ask D'Angelo, so right here in Vegas, I'm going to ask D'Angelo to share um, his story about the accident, what the doctors uh, were saying about him and everything and so to give him a little detail about the action. okay so um I, february 17th I, I just remember um I, I had a hit on collision with a bus um i don't remember hitting the bus only thing i remember i was in the ambulance and they said they shocked me with the thing they said clear and i was like <gasps> And I woke up and I went back to sleep. And I didn't even know what happened. I didn't know if I was shot. I didn't know. What was the last thing you remember before? The, the last thing I remember, that was what I remember being in the ambulance and they hit me with the clear to revive me. I guess I, I, I was dead or something. I don't know. But I just remember that. And then I remember. Um, Share with them when Auntie says the last thing. I mean, for right before the accident, what is the last thing you remember? You came to an intersection. So, or like, I just, um, I felt like God put me to sleep. Okay. To be honest, because, okay. um, you know, when God wants to talk to you, the only way, especially for me, he had to slow me down, put me mm -hmm. on my back mm -hmm. because I would, I was moving too fast. I okay. was just, I was moving fast. Mm -hmm. And so when he put me on my back and slowed me down, I, I realized what he wanted from me. You know, I, like I was too young to to grasp everything when I was a kid, but mm -hmm. now when you become older, yes. um, you look at life different. And so, um, tell them a little more. I don't mean to interrupt. Tell them a little more about. Okay, because I kind of interrupted you. So when you after the accident, all you remember was being in the paramedics. Yeah, they were I, I remember mm -hmm. being um, coming out of surgery. Mm -hmm. I remember the doctor said, if this car wreck happens 99 times, it will be 99 dead people. He said, I don't know how you're alive and how you're not paralyzed. Because um, I had a C2 fracture in my neck and um, most people don't live through a C2 fracture. So I had broke um, both of my ribs, my neck, my pelvic, my femur, my leg, my kneecap, and my hip. Um, so those were the extent of my injuries. Um, and I just remember like being, like when he said that, I was like, wow, like I didn't even know what happened. And I just remember um, I, I got a lot of support Thank everybody for the support and prayers and the oh, visits. Yes. Um, it's a lot of people that showed up, you know, and were there for me. So I'm extremely grateful for that. Um, God is good, you know, because he gave me a, a second chance at life again. So um, I know I'm here for a real reason, and I know the reason. All right, this is just the beginning of it. Um, so I, I just know when you go through anything, only way you could get out is with God. You know, when I was sitting in the hospital laying on my back, I just remember they had this sign. Uh, it was um, slip. It said slip and call, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something like Lawyers, that. It was like no slip, slip or call, right? And I was just, I remember this, this this sign that just kept, and I just kept looking up to the ceiling. And I was just like, I was just, when I was in pain, I just remember thanking God because I didn't want to give the devil no glory. Yes. Um, yes. So I just remember thanking God, even when I was in pain, God, the, the, this is glory to you. I'm hurting times when I was in the hospital where I was feeling like I was going to die. God, this is glory to you. I never get, I never acknowledged the devil at all um, through my situation because I knew that if I'm still alive now, yes. God, he wants me to do Purposed something, it. you That's know what right. I mean? So it was like more so like, okay, now what's the plan? Amen. So you've heard, you've heard most of my nephews, just three. He's, I think he only really gave you three segments of his testimony, but I'm telling you, God is so good. Um, like I said, he's made him almost like a, uh, to me, like a, a bionic man. Are we still on camera? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Radio. <laughs> okay, it says YouTube. So anyway, you've heard a portion of, of D'Angelo Collins' testimony, and we are definitely, thank you. <laughs> I see the numbers now, thanks. And so we're definitely um, going to be continuing this as a series, and we want you to join us. This is Pastor Natalie with Heart of Zion Ministries, my special guest today, D'Angelo Collins from the Bay Area, but we're up in the Silver State now, and he's still walking miracle. So thank you so much much. Remember my friend, Nancy Lee Weiss. Uh, my YouTube channel is Natalie P. Okay. Natalie, N-A-T-A-L-I-E P. So look for the video. Thank you so much. God bless you. and God keep you. Mm -hmm.